Beautiful, beautiful day. Agape Nation, beloved community. Seems very appropriate to speak about beloved community as tomorrow we are celebrating Martin Luther King Jr. Day. I'm Reverend Dr. Coco Stewart. I'm delighted to be speaking with you this morning. Reverend Michael, Reverend Dr. Michael is traveling. We will hear from him later and uh, grateful that he is taking time for himself at this moment. So Dr. Michael, Reverend Michael's theme for the month is how to make a beautiful life. And I don't know about you, but when I hear that, something opens in my heart and in my soul. Something of a higher vibration and energetic that already knows the infinitude of divine beauty that is at home in every soul, every life. We behold it through a, a consciousness of loving grace. You know, you can only behold as much beauty as you are willing to accept within yourself. I understand for myself and for all of us that always is getting magnified. Isn't that a glorious thing? That as we speak about how to live a beautiful life, it's exciting to me that there's always more. There's always more. No matter how much radiant, dynamic beauty we are willing to accept, as our identity, our heart, our soul, our heritage, our lineage, that we come from beauty, that each one of you is the divine beauty of the infinite in ways of wonder, in ways of awesomeness that God is. So how to live a beautiful life, the first thing that of course I would say is meditate, which is what we're here to do today. The Dharma talk, Dharma being about how to live our life as a contemplative, not necessarily contemplative, but meditative practice, which for me, meditation is anchoring in my own oneness and union in God and allowing whatever is to move through my consciousness to elevate it is happening in that centering moment. It takes <clears throat> discipline, discipline of the spirit, discipline of consciousness, you know, I know for many of us, it doesn't always feel, quote, easy to do, and it's not. That's where the discipline comes in. And yet, it pays profoundly rich dividends of the soul and of the light. This is how we learn to have a closer walk with God of joy. Again, is our innate birthright, identity, heart, heritage, and lineage. You are the beauty of the infinite, here to glow for God. So, in meditation practice, it's a clarifying um, energy, it's a clarifying practice, forgive me, that allows us to come directly into divine self, into direct knowing of our divinity through a quality and an energy, I would say, of unconditional love. That's the intention, that's the purpose. As always, Dr. Michael likes to say, we meditate to wake up. This is to wake up to who we really are. Now, along the way, there can be moments where the waking up part can feel a little bit challenging. We say, we know we want to wake up. We have the intention. We know what we're waking up to. Be sure you understand that. And that is we're waking up to divinity itself as life, breath, body, being, as all that is around us. And today, I'm going to focus that on waking up to more beauty, specifically, as life itself, as breath itself. As a part of my spiritual, I've always been a pretty dedicated person who meditates. I love my meditation practice. It has brought me, it has basically saved my sanity. I can say it that way. There was a time, a challenging moment that I went through, and Spirit has asked me to share that story with you. Remember, we're focusing on living a beautiful life and living from that space. And again, along the way, it's as if, well, what I know is happening is that big chunks of our personality, part of ourself, that no longer serve living from peace or spiritual intelligence or unconditional love or pure, pure beauty, those parts of ourself that can no longer they can't come along anymore, you know? And, it, and when we go through a time of challenging, uh, challengingness, <laughs> for lack of a better way to put it, it's important to keep in mind that what's happening 
is all of the spiritual practices we have put into play in place, meditation, affirmative prayer, life visioning, mindfulness, whatever, all of our spiritual practice is actually working. It's actually working. And that's an important essential awareness to have. I came to a time in my meditation practice, this was many years ago, <clears throat> where a time, I'm gonna use this word, of seeming unsettlement began. What that means is I felt completely, um, um, being in my own skin was highly uncomfortable. That's sometimes when that thing is happening. We, um, let's see, Dr. Holmes called it, Ernest Holmes called it chemicalization, where your old beliefs, your old thoughts, your old ways of being, the, the parts of you that don't believe you're beautiful, <laughs> that don't believe you're divinely self-identified as the one life here to fulfill itself on Mother Earth. Those parts of us, the places of unbelief, we are made of the body of our belief, so you understand that when you continually stand in the truth of your being, sometimes you hit a point where now all of this dissolves itself. So at this point, I started feeling not just unsettled in my meditation. Now, mind you, I kept on meditating. And, I, and this is not at one sitting, you understand. This is over a period of time. I don't know how long, a bit of time. And I always knew and understood that by being still, there was a depth and a power and a healing that was activating itself and would continue to take me deeper into its own heart and soul. However, this other part of me had no belief in that, <laughs> and it was struggling to hang on for dear life. For these old thought patterns, they have no life unless we give them life. So I felt very um, unsettled in my meditation. I started feeling, you know, when I look back on that time, I effectively felt unsettled in every aspect because I wasn't comfortable in my own skin. It was that thing that just things were, I was getting rocked in my inner world. I started having panic attacks, or at least the beginnings of them, and that made me feel a little bit, you know, more crazy, right? And, and so, so this, I kept meditating, and I, I even went away on a minister's convo and had a seeming or apparent, what looked like a panic attack, not a full out one, but I was uncomfortable, I'm just telling you. So what always brought me, you know, I have very little comfort, and I mean comfort within myself at that time. There was very little that brought me any sense of peace, but one thing that did, is that I lived really close to agape, and I just always felt like, oh good. And that's a very human thing, because we know we're always connected to God. I'm just sharing with you what my process was. So of course, I was seeing my licensed practitioner, and I'm sure that she um, was telling me the truth, but here's what I recall. So at one point, because this uncomfortable, this intensity was magnifying, it was not getting less. I would sit with it and sit with it, it was not getting better, took myself over, sat myself in Reverend Michael's office. I remember when he was sitting, he, it seemed like he was sitting a long ways away, he had a very big desk at the time. <laughs> and he was sitting there and he listened to me. This still makes me cry because I knew he would be very kind, very compassionate and very loving, and he was. He listened to what was happening. I'm like, I'm losing my mind, I can't go on like this. And he listened to me with a lot of heart, which I knew he would, and just the fact that he was there and took in the totality of my being was not only comforting, but I'm sure healing to some degree. And then he said, because I was asking him, what do I do, of course? And he said, Coco, if you were anybody else, I would tell you, read positive, uplifting literature, work with affirmations. He probably said more, but I'm gonna tell you what he said. He said, but for you, I have to tell you, your work is to sit and let it pass through your consciousness. I flipped out inwardly. I don't know if I said anything. I didn't hear much more <laughs> that went. I don't remember if I responded or didn't respond. Again, to be in his presence was healing for me in some way, although the minute he said, I had to sit with it. Of course, my mind went berserk because it was running things and said, no, 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 no. This man has no understanding of what a real panic attack is. There's no sitting down. There's like escape happening. We're like running out the door as fast as we can. Who knows where we're going? No, no goal in mind. That's just the energy. So I, I think I kind of said, 
whatever, or maybe I said this, I don't know. So of course he prayed, prayed with me and, and then I, I left his office and of course I'm thinking now what am I gonna do and I just continued to feel just lost and that was, so sure shooting, I bet it was about 48 hours later, I woke up bright and early <clears throat> and the other way that my body chemicalizes old thought patterns and beliefs are with intense, uh, seems like it appears as though it's a headache, it's old energy breaking up and chemicalizing. So don't you know, I woke up a couple of days later and I had all the beginnings of an intense um, energy movement called a headache. And I kind of dragged myself downstairs to my meditation couch and I was doing my best. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing my best to sit and to just notice, to let the wave of pain come up, to let the wave of nausea come up, and to not buy into it. And then what do you think happened? <laughs> of course what happened is that energy that wanted me to run came up. Yes, of course. I think I got up and I was in tremendous pain, so I did it. I just kind of made it over by my dining room window, and I just kind of stood there and I think I probably shut my eyes and what I saw with my inner eye was a window very high up in a cell. I was in the cell and there was only a very small window very high up that had very thick bars on it and what I understood immediately was there was no way out except to be with myself. I remember just that sinking feeling in my gut and thought I had no thought, I probably had no thought. Managed to get myself <laughs> back to my meditation. I think my husband checked in at some point and I said, I, I just have to sit. I think I told him I had a headache. I hadn't told him the whole thing. So, interestingly enough, as Reverend Michael had told me to do, I had to sit because I could not move. And I got to watch and notice just as best as I could I knew that he was in prayer with me somewhere. I knew that my practitioner was in prayer with me. I understood what was happening intellectually, but that, that experience was pretty intense. Or I, and also, <clears throat> as this was moving out, I'm sure that what Reverend Michael had been telling me, that as we sit in meditation, we are actively engaged in our God consciousness. It is the God consciousness of our identity that will absolutely, absolutely dissolve, nullify, and make all the old thought patterns just melt away. But there is a place in practice that it is about being with the God of our own nature, the spiritually intelligent focus of our identity, knowing it is bigger than anything that comes to us. Even in that moment when I really thought that I was losing my mind because Something was leaving, that was sh for sure. I had the good sense to be able to just sit, of course, because I couldn't go very far the way spirit worked that one out. So I sat, it was not lost on me. Even in that moment I thought, oh, okay. Reverend Michael told me I needed to sit and this is what's gonna happen here now. So I just sit and watched wave after wave move through my consciousness. Of course, what happened? The cell broke up the light came blasting through. Realization, revelation, transformation, all that I had been seeking to know God more directly as my soul's purpose, source, and identity leaped now into greater awareness to a deeper, powerful degree than I had ever known before in my life. So when we talk about how to make a beautiful life, there are sometimes those places in ourself where the old is breaking up and this is again the beginning of a new year and sometimes um, beings are tuned into that. It's a new year and the old is has leaving. So sometimes there's that. So becoming willing to allow yourself to acknowledge the beauty of the light that is your identity and to let it glow through you no matter what seems to be happening inwardly or outwardly. You know, the cleansing that I was going through, the chemicalization I was going through, you know, all of Mother Earth is chemicalizing and therefore all of humanity is chemicalizing and letting go of old beliefs about who we are and what we're doing on the planet. I had a microcosm and that's what's in, at that moment 
and now there's a bigger picture you can look at and say, oh, I see, there's a cleansing, there's a clearing, there's something that Ernest Holmes called chemicalization. The old beliefs are dying, the new is coming up. And I'm willing to work on behalf of myself, on behalf of every life I touch, to allow the new to rise up in consciousness, to know that the living God of my own being, the light of my soul, the light of understanding, the light of meaning, the light of value, the luminous identity, now it does indeed shine and glow as the beauty that is the only thing that's real, the only thing that falls away. You notice in this story, I didn't lose anything that I lost a prison cell. I think that's a really good thing. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that that which was holding me back, and it was just my own thought, deeply anchored thought, of course, and it had to go. And I was grateful that I had the tools, I had the commitment, I had the community, I had other beings to walk with me and to allow the glow of divine beauty to be the carrying thread taking me forward. So I'm going to invite all of us to practice being in touch with the living beauty of our own souls. Yes, that's what we're here to do. So let's allow ourselves to move into our time of meditation. And as you know, now is the time, as Dr. Michael likes to remind us, that we just allow, our side, as allow ourselves to put aside anything that may be in the field of our attention. So I'm just going to take this moment with you and just anchor us and center us. So Holy Spirit, infinite life, I give thanks for every blessed being that is tuning in. I give thanks for the power of divine, the divine meditating each soul here in a way, shape, and form that is clear, that is understandable, that is healing, that is revelatory of the infinite, that allows every being to tune in, to tap in, to activate, to empower a living truth of active loving presence. I bless our time together and let it be. Amen. I invite you to come in with your breath. Focus on your breath. And again, just keep your attention on your breath. You can put your attention on the third eye. You want to sit with your spine erect, with your arms and legs uncrossed. And I invite your attention as a focused attention, that the intention specifically to wake up to divine beauty of the soul that is your life, no matter what appears to be within yourself, outside yourself. I activate the feeling tone of living, loving, heartfelt beauty in all its dimensions, in all its rays, in all its glory that has been known up until now and the more of divine beauty that is seeking realization, revelation, illumination in this dimension. You may follow the breath, follow the light, the beauty of divine light that breathes you. your attention wanders, just bring it back either to the breath or to the sense of light that is your soul.
iridescent light leads you to divine beauty within.
beauty. Another moment to focus on the light, divine beauty in your own soul. Just another moment. So take a cleansing breath, let it go. Yes. I invite you to take another cleansing breath and let it go. And a third one. And so holy, infinite, divine, sweet spirit of life, I am deeply grateful for all souls, all being, all those of such profound spiritual integrity as being unified here and now in the holy light of infinite beauty and love. I take this opportunity as I bless each and every one that is tuning in, whether it's live or on the archives. I feel and sense and know that what we could call the touch of the Holy Spirit upon the soul has been activated and illumined, that it registers within divine mind a great truth, a great outpicturing, a great download of such powerful magnificence through and as each individual tuning in, the like of which has never been seen before, and yet, and yet, it is so on time. It is on time to fulfill the divine idea 
of God's life through all of humanity. So I bless each of us in ways of wonder and awe, loving presence and truth that any prayer request that is on anybody's heart, I bless and know that the spirit of love and life already has got that. It's already fulfilling itself. And I am profoundly grateful, grateful for the inspired beauty that permeates and pervades all consciousness, all life, and is the view today from the high holy estate within every being here. In gratitude and love, I know it is done, and I say, Amen. Amen. Blessed, beautiful souls. Now is the time for our conscious giving, a wonderful time in the service, when you may take this opportunity to think about anything that you have um, benefited from, whether it's today or all of Dr. Michael's teachings, all of the past 36 years, any of the ministers, all of the practitioners. So much beauty has brought through and forth as this community. You know, I want to say, aren't we lucky? But you know, luck has nothing to do with it. <laughs> we signed up for it and said yes. So it is purposeful and intentional that you're tuning in right now. So we just take a moment as you think about your gift, your tithe, your donation, your offering. We just invite you to m begin to contemplate that. And I just take this moment. And I speak the word just to bless the offering briefly. And so Holy Spirit, divine life, how grateful I am for the out pouring of the infinite giftedness that is God's own through each and every being that benefits the ones who give, knowing one can never outgive God, and that the fullness of God has its way through our giving time today. So in gratitude, I let it be. Amen. Ah, so thank you for the screen that's up here. There's the QR code that you could put your phone up to, whether it's on your computer or in, your, in the sanctuary, if you follow this QR code, the beautiful thing, it'll take you right to the donation page. You can do it wherever you're tuning in on your, on your live stream, whether you're on Dr. Michael's Facebook page, Agape's Facebook page, or, or if you're on YouTube. So this QR code has been fantastic. There are other ways to give. I'm hoping, there we go. You can text GIVE to 424-321-6243, you know. Your phone will lead you through that. You can sign up on all of these ways to either be a one-time donation or, um, or to give even in a moment when you're not thinking about it. Let's see, there's a, yep. You can mail in your donation, of course, the old-fashioned way. Some of us like to do a little bit of all of this. It's fun. So you can write a check and make it out to Agape. Dr. Michael loves reading the notes, the letters, the cards. Mail it to what's on your screen, Agape International Spiritual Center. 8549 Wilshire Boulevard, Suite 1156, Beverly Hills, 90211. Trying to think if there are, oh, of course. If you're on the Agape website, you know you're on a safe, secure website, and you can push the donate button, and it moves right through. Once again, you can set it up for one time, or that it gives over time. I don't know if I have, if I have any other ways of giving that I, that I missed. Ah, I think we've got it. Okay, thank you so much. Let's hear from Dr. Michael. Peace and richest blessings to you. You know who I am, Michael B. Beck, with the founder of Agape International Spiritual Center. And today, you're in for a real treat. You have Master Practitioner Akili Beckwith bringing the message. You have Soulful Nina Gray bringing the soulful music. You've had possibly by this time the Reverend Coco Stewart leading the way of meditation service and so much more. So today I want you to be available to the message coming through all three of these channels and more. I've had the uh, privilege of this week teaching at the Rhythmia Life Advancement Center. So this week I've been teaching and counseling, but as of this particular moment, I'm taking a moment to rest. I'm going to be here in Costa Rica this next week with my daughter and my son and we're going to hang out and I'm going to replenish. And so today, be full of the spirit, be full of the love, be full of all that's pulling you to agape and allow it to emerge. And so much good is waiting for you right now. 
We're in the theme, how to have a beautiful life. I want you to do so. Peace and blessings. Bless you, Reverend Michael. Sometimes he tunes in. You never know. So grateful he's taking time for himself. As always at Agape, there's always a lot going on. I'm gonna, you can continue to prepare your gifts and your ties, and Reverend Julie Moret is coming forward to highlight, give some highlights of announcements. Good morning. You can visit agapelive.com to get details on all items mentioned and all times are Pacific Standard Time. You can also find out about all of our weekly offerings when you go to the website. We know that you love to dance with the Rev on Sundays at Agape, but how would you like to meditate with the Rev? Well, if you thought Reverend Michael has all the moves on stage, just wait until you experience how he gets down and deep into the mechanics and mysticism of meditation. Meditation helps you uncover and discover more of your energetic blueprint, purpose, unique giftedness, and it's been scientifically proven to boost your immune system and nervous systems and increase focus and mental sharpness. And meditation is fun. So join Reverend Michael and guest master practitioners Akili Beckwith, Reverend Joan Stedman, Reverend Coco Stewart, and Trish Waddell. Register today for this five-week course. It begins this Tuesday, January 17th. And this is going to be kind of fun because Reverend Michael is going to begin facilitating the class from Costa Rica. So the class will be infused with that pura vida, that pure life energy. And you might hear some monkeys in the background. Just saying. All right, for meditation today, you have been listening to Soak Sound Frequency Therapy, the clinically proven healing protocol that pairs positive affirmations and specific sound frequencies to provide energetic and cellular alignment. They're offering our Agape community an exclusive new opportunity when you sign up for the seven day free trial using the code AGAPE50. You'll receive 50% off all sound soak frequencies for life. Yes, you only pay one half, you only pay half price for the life of your subscription. Go to soak.com, enter the code agape50 and get your soak on today. Agape will continue to be open to the public on Sundays at 11 a.m. for meditation, 11.30 for fellowship service. We love, love, love seeing you here. So come on down. As always, all of our services are live streamed. Today at 2 p.m., the Agape Wise Ones invite our 50 plus community to Zoom with the Agape Wise Ones and celebrate with these savvy elders to share deeper spiritual love while connecting as divine radiance. Go to agapelive.com, click on the Agape Wise One banner to register. The Crisis Support Clinic will return next Monday, January 23rd. The LGBTQAI plus ministry invites everyone to join at our new time on Saturdays, January 21st, 9 a.m. live on Zoom. Guest speaker is Jennifer Kapler, Agape licensed spiritual practitioner. She's going to facilitate an interactive play process of catching a vision through creative art. Come create and play with us. Email lgbt at agapelive.com for the deets. And Reverend Michael has put all of his best supplements and superfoods into one easy powder. Adaptos in superfood greens. Try it. You're going to find it tastes great even in water. Try the bundle. Get your monthly supply with the Adaptos in vitamin D3 plus K2 to boost your immunity. Order yours today. Go to Nutririse.com, click on Adaptozen and get 10% off of your first order. As you've heard, there's so many different ways to pump up this year. Pick what's yours and jump in. Thank you so much, Reverend Julie. So join with me once again as we just have a moment together. And within your own soul, I invite you to contemplate the offering once again. Wrap a lot of love around it, a lot of elevated consciousness, a consciousness of prosperity and abundance for yourself, for all those who give, for, for agape. And just join with me in your own heart and soul. And through me and as me, I speak the word once again. And no divine love through me blesses and multiplies this offering. It is pressed down and running over as a benefit and a blessing to all who participate in it and as it. It is a blessing because I make it so, and so it is. Amen. Amen. So thank you so much, everyone. We're going to have our benediction in a moment. But, of course, what's coming up is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Uh, of course, a profound leader in civil rights movement, um, a preacher, and 
powerful being of nonviolence. So I want you to, I want you to uh, take a moment as we stand up and prepare to pray out to listen to this audio. And people ask me about it all the time. So what do you mean when you tell us to love these people who are beating on us and bombing our houses and kicking our children around? What in the world do you mean when you say love such people? And I always have to stop and try to define the meaning of love in this area. And interestingly enough, Greek philosophy comes to our aid at this point. There are three words in the Greek language for love. One of them is the word eros. Now eros is a sort of aesthetic love. Uh, it has come to us to mean a sort of romantic love. And so we all know about eros. We've experienced it. We've read about it in the beauties of literature. Then the Greek language talks about phileo, which is another level of love. It is an intimate affection between personal friends. On this level, we love because we are love. We love people that we like. This is friendship. Then the Greek language has another word called agape. Agape is more than romantic love. Agape is more than friendship. Agape is not something affectionate. Agape is understanding, creative, redemptive goodwill for all men. It is an overflowing love which seeks nothing in return. Theologians would say that it is the love of God operating in the human heart. And when one rises to love on this level, he loves men not because he likes them, but he loves every man because God loves him. He goes on with that. And so he rises to the level of hating the system rather than the individual who is caught up. So we stand in a United State of Agreement anchored in, as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. told us, agape love, the love of God operating in the human heart through humanity itself. So I take this moment as God's moment and just invite maybe the chant to come forward and then I do the benediction. <laughs> so just have a few minutes with this. I'm tired of the guilt that brings me pain. Now is the time for me to let go of the shame. The past behind me, I see anew. I'm ready for my change. I'm ready for. So, my how change. glorious it is to be ready for the shift in consciousness that happens <clears throat> with grace through the energy and the power of agape love. How grateful I am to speak this word of divine embrace for all those tuning in, lifting each one high in the name, the nature, the energy, the transformational energetic of agape love, taking each of us beyond circumstance, effect, condition, the past, any concern about the future, into the illuminative presence, the luminous identity of agape love itself as soul presence throughout this community and beyond. So in gratitude, I know it is done and I release the word and so it is, amen. I do invite you to come back at 8.30, we have meditation at nine o'clock. We have magnificent speaker, our own master teacher, Akili Beckwith. If you heard him at this service last week, you know you're gonna wanna hear him speak. Nina Gray is our musical inspiration. See you all back here right at that time. Love to you, Agape Nation.